Hey, hey, everyone, this is Lily San, and welcome to another wonderful episode of the Startup Celebrity Show, where we showcase emerging startups, you know, where they uh, have lots of gifts and talents to share as well, and we, allow, and we have this platform for them. So today, I have the wonderful and gorgeous Yin Han. How do you pronounce it? In Chinese, it's Yin Han. It's like Yin Han, Xing Yin, Yin Han Yang Han. Han. Ying Han. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you maybe, if you can hear her, you may wonder how come she's got this accent, but she has a Chinese name, but because she's Chinese. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so honored uh, to have her here. She's, of course, the member of the Spiritual Entrepreneurs, where we mm-hmm. are more than 17,000 members there. So if you would like to see what's going on in there, do invite us. Uh, do, I do invite you to join us. Uh, I'm the host, obviously, <laughs> of the 17,000 member group and also the founder of the Spiritual School of Money. So without further ado, I want to introduce In Han. She is a muse making the unobtainable seem easy as an international personal innovation coach. She's appeared on BBC, mm, spoken at Forum of the Future with high-flying expat clients in five continents turning passion to impact without burning out. Well, there's just so much going on in this short 250 words bio. <laughs> like, she managed to squeeze everything inside. So without further ado, I actually would bring her on. Hey, hi, Yingan. Hi, how are you? Hi, Elise Ann. It's such an honor to be here. I've watched the spiritual entrepreneur group grow so large, so fast. And it's just been a pleasure to witness, you know, all the amazing entrepreneurs that have been on there. Even everywhere in the world, people who I meet know about the spiritual entrepreneur groups. Really? So it's an honor. Wow, interesting. Okay. So in case you're wondering, she's actually in San Francisco right now. It's that's super right. amazing. So that's why I really love technology. And actually, we met through Facebook. And so mm-hmm. I actually love the platform Facebook. I, should just, I, I need to be the ambassador for Facebook. I actually love it. <laughs> So tell us more about you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Awesome, yeah. So I, I have a very um, unconventional life. I was born um, by you know in Singapore, but have lived in Germany, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Shanghai, um, all over before ending up in California for college. Mm-hmm. And um, and being from so many places, um, you know, I was always been confused about like what am I supposed to do? I could do anything. I could have all these opportunities. What 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 is my purpose? Mm-hmm. So, um, so actually, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is because during the time that I was confused, I had to go through so many different ways to look for what that actually is my calling and what is my purpose. And then combining that with all the different majors that I had and my master's degree and all the education systems in order to birth um, my innovation and peak performance coaching. Nice, nice. But before we actually go on, what are you doing in San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> I am so I am attending and also helping um, two amazing workshops. So one of them is called Authentic Speaker Training, mm-hmm. and it's by one of my colleagues and friends, um, amazing woman Susan Kirby, and she basically helps people talk about their products in an authentic way because authenticity is is really how you can gain trust and also share what you do with other people with a huge impact. Right. And so that was one of the things that I did. And the other, the second one is called Money Breakthrough. And that's also um, organized by one of um, my most amazing mentors, Jesse. And he does a lot of work on the spiritual side of money, which I'm sure you um, you touch on as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So... You, I mean, we talked a little bit early on the sideline about you helping people create their products by discovering their gifts. Yes. So how did you discover your gifts? I mean, <laughs> like, you look pretty young. <laughs> so mm-hmm. how, did you, you, how did you discover your gifts and like, this is it, I'm going to do this? Yeah, you know, at least like living in so many places at such a young age, like having been to like 11 schools, um, you know, So four different continents and, and, you know, majoring in three, like economics, politics and and biology environment, as well as taking masters and being in different industries, I was exposed to so many different options Mm -hmm. and I never knew what actually was the one that I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that, you know, I could achieve all the academics and I could achieve the corporate success, um, 
but at the same time, it wasn't fulfilling. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized that I needed to look in a different direction on what is spiritually fulfilling for me, in addition to all the different types of, um, you know, academic intellectual rigor and, and fulfillment. And so what I did was I looked everywhere, you know, I looked like I remember one class I took in um, in the graduate school in Dhaka was talking about executive minds, which was basically a class that was geared towards um, a lot of C-suite members. I squeezed myself in that class as an undergrad. All everyone else there was already working, um, managing huge teams, and it was all about the mind and how mindset changed everything. Right. And week after week, when I see these executives come back in and implementing what we've learned in mindfulness. Um, the science of mindfulness um, and the shifts that their teams are making, I was thinking there's something in this. Mm -hmm. And then since then, yeah, go ahead. So you talked a lot about academics, like your master degree and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And mm -hmm. so I'm just curious, is that like prominent in your life right now? Or have you just gone to the other way and has got nothing to do with uh, what you studied? Uh, absolutely like that's a really good question so my latest degree is the innovation degree um wow. from Singapore Management University I'm actually the poster girl um so <laughs> I know I was like my friend was like hey we saw your ad on LinkedIn um but but that's really prominent in my life right now because the way that I, innovation is is innovation is very similar to coaching in the sense that you're opening value mm -hmm. where there where previously there was no value before and identifying new ways of providing value, new systems, new business models. Um, so the way that I look at life and I look at life coaching and I look at business coaching is, you know, innovation for your lifestyle and also for your business. And it has very much to do with all the multidisciplinary backgrounds that I have because that allows me to come in and help clients in all of the different industries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your age. I mean, did you, I mean, there are so many people, I mean, age is a thing when they're like 50, like, oh my God, I'm too old. When you're 24, oh my God, I'm too young. Has mm -hmm. age ever been like a factor to stop you from achieving like big dreams? Like I know the millennials, I mean, you're probably a millennial, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the two camps of millennials one are like one is like you know the, you know the singaporean type right like you know i'll just depend on the mother and the father and just you know but you're so different mm -hmm. so has and has the age stopped you from anything age 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 you know the it's a really good question because age is actually one of the things that could be a limiting belief or could, it could be something that's limiting or it could be something that is um, like, like that's a kick in the butt because mm -hmm. you're thinking like, hey, you know, I'm not married yet. Mm -hmm. I have a limited amount of time before I start a family and I need to get as much done as possible mm -hmm. and travel the world, do my dream before I start, um, before I start maybe having different energy spending on different priorities. Mm -hmm. so I think for me, it's always been a motivator mm -hmm. and growing up, especially in an environment where, you know, um, where I'm surrounded by people who are young and, and just have been doing amazing things um, makes me feel like, oh, actually, maybe I'm not that I'm behind anything, but maybe I can go just as quickly in my own journey. Mm, that's a good one. I think age is a limiting belief. It's also, it's also an excuse. Like regardless of whatever your age is, you always say, oh, I'm too, oh, I'm too young and I don't have enough experience, blah, blah, blah. It's just so a you, number. Yeah, yeah. So you just talk <laughs> about where you are. So you have a very interesting niche because mm -hmm. it's either people are helping people find what their gifts are, what their purpose is, and then it ends yeah. there. Yeah. And then there, the other side is go build a product. Mm-hmm. So you mm -hmm. have watched these two together. Yes, to exactly. Come up with this idea. Yes, to, um, absolutely. So I, my background is in digital marketing. So mm -hmm. I was working before coaching. I was in Ogilvy um, managing, um, you know, the APAC region marketing campaigns. And I've so always are there been... people who are in the dinosaur era, like maybe I'm like towards there. Like, is there a difference between digital marketing and internet marketing? Um... I would say that it is pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, digital marketing includes the digital side of everything. And this could include the digital portion of maybe offline marketing as well. Mm -hmm. So if there's an event, there'd be like digital marketing to promote that event. Internet marketing um, 
oftentimes may include, you know, only selling online products. Mm. But when I say digital, I mean everything that has right. to do with the online realm. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Please continue. Um, How did you end yeah, up? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I always knew that I wanted, you know, I started off wanting to create an app that mm-hmm. was able to, um, to process emotions for people. Cause I thought that the number one thing that Asians or my culture or, you know, my background really needed the people that I surrounded myself with was, was A, the ability to recognize emotions and then B, the ability to process them um, in a way that, that serves them and can create more potential rather than hold people back. Mm-hmm. And so that was my, so I wanted to figure out how, so I started and joined, no, I joined a mobile app startup mm-hmm. called Tiger Spike. And there I learned a lot about app development. Um, and then I thought, okay, maybe, you know, I wanted to learn how to scale this. Mm. So I joined a larger company, which was a global company that was managing, you know, big brands across seven countries um, or more than that global brand. But I was appointed to manage like a regional uh, marketing campaign. So I understood how to execute across multiple places. Um, so knowing the digital side is great, um, but then finding what your passion was, was also needed in order to use that as a mm-hmm. channel to distribute your message. Because I feel, because my belief and my mission is to help people figure out what their message is, because each person has their own message, has their mm-hmm. own thing they want to share, mm-hmm. and then using channels to share them, to package them and share them. Mm-hmm. Um, that's very smart i mean like i come from a spiritual background you know Mm -hmm. it's like really from no business background Mm -hmm. and then now just self-taught of course through coaches and mentors and whatever but literally from in our community like the spiritual rural community it's like i'm just gonna leave it to god i'm just Mm -hmm. gonna leave it to the you know so i'm just curious when you look at people like us do you go like but no no there's just no you know what i mean like you know when we did when we when I was a healer right and how do you yeah. package that you know we don't mm-hmm. know how to package that because right. our training just do not does not give us this knowledge I mean our background is learn how to heal and go yeah. out and just start yeah. healing and do cut readings and whatever yeah right it wasn't until um that I got exposed to co- the coaching world or mm-hmm. really the entrepreneurship world that I realized there's so many other things you can do to monetize your gifts and passion. Definitely. So what's your, what's your um, advice for people who are, you know, really in the woo-woo service-based where mm-hmm. they're like, no, I don't need that. What do you have to say to them? Well, your people need you. So whatever woo-woo business you're in, there are people who need what you do. And so your job is to really be able to find and be able to be visible to those people that need you and be in front of them. And so how are you going to do that? Because you not being in front of them and not being visible and not marketing yourself or not creating products that help those people that need you is a disservice to the people that need you. Mm -hmm. So how would they, like, what if they have this reluctance or this resistance to creating an online product? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And then asking, so so one of the things that I do, um, the online products that are different from regular online products is that I look at your message and I see what what is your core message and what are you committed to so that it's when you're creating an online product, it's not just a product, but it is an extension of yourself, an extension to your message. So it's much more meaningful. It's like... Um, it's like a personalized version of who you are mm-hmm. um, packaged in a way that someone on the other side of the screen can consume. Mm-hmm. And I think um, going back to what you have written in the bio, it's to mm-hmm. get burnout. And how many, how many clients can you serve anyway? Like, you know, like even if you charge a thousand dollars a session, which yeah. I know a lot of people are screaming, no, it's not possible. Who am I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like the point, but let's just say you're charging a thousand dollars a session. And let's just say you have three clients a day. So that's Mm -hmm. $3,000, right? And you you don't want to work every day because healing is also taxing. So even if you made like $30,000 a day, it's still trading time for money. It's a lot of money. $30,000 is a lot of money. But it's trading time for money. And eventually it's still a job and you actually hate it. (laughs) Yeah. Because you'll be burnout. You go through it. Right? Exactly. So so that's why um, this avenue of channeling 
your message out there. See, I use the word channeling in mm. digital product. It's so effective. Exactly. And it also leverages your time. You bring up a really good point. You know, having, you know, you can only have a limited amount of clients for a limited amount of time each week. Mm -hmm. And if you want to help more people, having your message um, on a place where you can reach thousands of people um, mm -hmm. allows thousands more people to, to use your message or to benefit from your message without you being awake and you being in front of them. Mm, yep, that's so true, leverages that's your time so you can make more money less time yeah. and still serve more people and help more people right 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 so there shouldn't be any resistance after hearing this because at the end of the day we are spiritual and if you have a gift then we really want to help a lot of people you want to you want to share as many people as possible yeah yeah absolutely and you might even find your tribe in in different places that is not face to face Right, right. So what's the one advice you can give to, you know, the spiritual community tribe, like right now, what, what, they can, what can they do right now to get started? I know they can call you, <laughs> they can contact you. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure there are people who are starting in the baby steps right now, like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to you maybe three months down the road. Mm -hmm. Three months down the road is three months down the road. But what can they do right now to help them just overcome whatever hurdles that <laughs> they have in their mind? Yeah. So ask yourself, like, what is that thing that you want? Where is that goal that you want to be? Or what is that? How do you see your, first of all, know what your gifts are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sometimes very challenging. So, um, okay, I'm sorry, I have a question. So yes. So what those people who don't know who, what their gifts are? Because I know a lot of spiritual people probably think they know, like mm -hmm. healing, card reading, but what they are also spiritual people who are spiritual, but not in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so how do they discover their gifts? Do you teach them or go through a process? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cool. So I have a two-page process that I bring people through mm -hmm. and it allows them to identify places in their lives where they have shown mm -hmm. uh, and displayed their gifts. And once they realize what those virtues or what those values are, you can build upon them into something that, um, that serves them better. Right, right. That's so it's 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 really important because it's very important. Yeah, I mean in the community right now or out there in the market, everybody wa just wants to jump from quitting a job to starting a business. Yes. But they don't know what to do. They just know they want to start a business. They've been conditioned to think that starting a business is the way to free is the route to freedom. But it's not mm -hmm. actually it's worse. I think it's better off getting a job, right? It's actually yeah, it's just, business is the whole spiritual process on its own. So you'll be having a spiritual journey and a business spiritual journey. Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, but what you were saying is absolutely right. Like figuring out, you know, what are your values? Like figuring out what your lifestyle is first mm -hmm. and then figuring out what your values are. So lifestyle, like what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Do you want your business to be nine to five? Do you want your business to be helping other people? Like which days, like understanding what your ideal world looks like and then figuring, so you need the structural side and then you also need, the gift side because the gift will then be an energy that kind of populates that structure right 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 so i have another question right i mean like you're mm -hmm. successful in your age so i'm not sure are, are you doing what you're doing when i mean like some people who study law but they end up being a chef are you yeah. in that category or not i think i'm the kind of person who probably studied way more like all these things and then where I am now is where they all converge. Right. So, what, so you, what I yeah. Does your parents have anything to say about your <laughs> entrepreneur journey since like you, I mean, like if you go to like the grad school and the typical mm -hmm. route, right? I mean yeah. the, the next step will be get a job. But now you're yeah. on your entrepreneurial journey. Did your parents say anything? Did your family members say anything? It's really funny actually because in the beginning, um, on the beginning of the journey, my dad, my dad's a chemical engineer. And so that's mm -hmm. why I did all the science stuff mm -hmm. growing up. And I was doing all the math and science. And, you know, my thesis was in green buildings, engineering, analyzing from engineering, political and economics. So like I had those systems in place. And as I was switching into innovation, my dad started switching into innovation too. And so now <laughs> he is, yeah, so we kind of have a parallel career, although his is like retired kind of in a way. Um, so so he, now he's helping a lot of energy efficiency, promoting innovation all across uh, Shanghai and China. Mm. Uh, and also talking to, you know, um, I think he was talking to a prime minister of like Croatia and different countries. And so as he's doing that and he has chapters on 
education, he starts looping me in as well so that I can start helping and building the part on education and, um, and well-being. Wow. So nice. we're actually collaborating on a couple of projects. Um, at the same, I mean, it's not easy. I would say like, you know, for them to trust you to be able to, um, to do something that's entrepreneurial and has such a high risk factor is of course something that um, you need constant transparency and communication in. Um, so but I think like now your dad is like a dad plus a business partner <laughs> plus... I don't know, investor, I don't know, maybe, like, like he's got support, 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 yeah, support, support. like, yeah. leader. So how mm-hmm. do you manage, like, like, the roles with him? I mean, certainly when you're talking about business, you can't be like, oh, daddy, no, it's not possible. I mean, you probably <laughs> that, right? You'll be doing that when yeah. you are just father and daughter. So tell us about the relationship because it's really interesting. Yeah. So um, it's funny because my dad and my relationship, it has always been very intellectual. Mm-hmm. And also, and most recently, he got, he also got into, you know, the more emotional side of things, because I've been sharing a lot more around the coaching side of things, because he never really understood what coaching was. He thought it was um, psychotherapy in the beginning. <laughs> and so I was like, no, dad, this is how it works. And I was like, explaining to him. So, so the relationship has gone from um, father daughter like authority mm-hmm. figure to daughter mm-hmm. um, to kind of evening out um, I kind of broke free for a little while did my own thing and then came back and shared with him and now I feel like we're much more in this realm of you know we fill in each other's um, spaces and it's more like a balanced yin yang relationship mm-hmm. uh, which is very pleasurable and and you know we talk about mom in in a very open manner as well and, and my sister and we talk about the familial relationships and how we want to go forward and so i feel like this is something that i've you know last year um it was on my vision board and my and my plan for the year to have better family relationships and this year i'm so proud to to you know say that that's exactly um and we're getting to the perfect place but like this is exactly where i wanted to be nice how about mom with mom is, is this mom thing? is amazing so mom is mom is kind of the reason why i was the way that i was before which was easily triggered and emotional mm. and had a lot of money blocks and and so communicating with working through the things that i had to work through and communicating with mom was a very long journey because you know sometimes she says something I get triggered sometimes I do something she gets triggered we Mm -hmm. both trigger each other and Mm -hmm. it's just like explosions Mm -hmm. um so working through that was an extremely important journey Um, how did you realize that you need to work through your triggers with mom because a lot of us I mean if we're not on the personal development stage we will just think this is faded mom is just like this you know we'll just have this very (laughs) awkward relationship for the rest of our life Yeah, but you're so young. How did you realize that you actually need to get some work done? Was it like so unbearable that like I should have done something? Like it was an undying commitment to wanting real and genuine connection. Like I, I, you know, I would tell my mom, like, "Hey, mom, like, let's have quality time. Let's have heart to heart." And she's like, "I don't do that. This is like your thing. This is not my thing." And so is mom the typical Singaporean type? Totally. She's like, ah, like, you know, what is this? You know, stuff like that. And, and I'm just like, or she would say, I think something recently, she's like, um, she would, she'd be like in the kitchen cutting stuff. And, and I'll be like, Hey mom, like, let's have a chat or let's talk. And she's like, okay, let's talk, let's talk. And she'll be like continuing doing her thing. And, and she wouldn't understand like what I meant. She's like, you know, um, she'll be like, Hannah, like, like talking to you is very tiring. Cause you just want to <laughs> sit down and like look in each other's eyes. She's like, it's very tiring for me. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Has she shifted so- since you shifted? I think like what it is, is it takes both adjustments. So mm-hmm. I understand how she likes to be talked to. And I also understand like my way is not obviously the way that, you know, um, I don't have to do it this way. Right. Um, but I noticed that both of our goals is to become closer and more understanding of each other. And so, um, so by introducing um, a drip, I would say like an IV drip of, you know, sharing information with her. She's able to also understand where I'm coming from. And then I also ask her so that I understand where she's coming from um, so that it's, it's, uh, it's better and right. it's much more amicable. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. Mom relationships, when they improve, when parental relationships improve, business improves as well. 
Yeah, totally. I have my mm-hmm. huge mom thing as well. How about sister? Is sister mm-hmm. like you or sister is the other side? Sister is extremely, um, she's very practical, happy-go-lucky. And um, she is currently, um, she looks up, she, she really enjoys what, um, what I do and she believes in it and very supportive. Um, so, but she's just starting her spiritual journey. But it's really interesting, like, Mm -hmm. dad is a mix of not quite Singaporean. Dad is kind of, like, well-traveled and... (laughs) Hello. One second. So, as we were saying, um, parental relationship improves, business improves. And I was asking about, like, how interesting... The dynamics of both parents you have, like, I think that's how both parents are. One is quiet and one is, like, more open and, you know, that makes us interesting, right? So how do you cope with both mom and dad? Um, how do I cope with mom and dad? Like, do you have to play different personas <laughs> when you're with... Well, the thing is, my parents live in Shanghai and I live in Singapore. So I haven't lived with my parents for about... Um, ever since I was like 18. So, so I usually, I usually have, um, we do group WhatsApp chats and we keep in touch in different ways, but I've been quite independent since, um, yeah, I was going to say that. that I I was going to say that you must be really independent. Yeah. I must be really proud of you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so it's been amazing because, because surrounding myself, um, a lot of the coaches that I've had and a lot of the people that I coach are all really young, um, independent people in the same sense. And so we're really growing this, this, this way of life and the way that millennials can really create a life of their own and not need to wait till much later to become entrepreneurs and things like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think you brought up two points, which mm-hmm. I actually want to talk about. You said yeah, something sure. about you know as we um, as parent relationship with parents improve our business improves Mm -hmm. I personally have witnessed that and I totally agree yeah I mean so why how did you come up with this statement this statement yeah um this has to do with abundance actually and this is one of the topics that I've been talking about and teaching as well in workshops recently um, which has to do with blocks and abundance so um so the way that abundance works and the way that the energy works in our bodies is that when we have when energy flows things go Mm -hmm. and when abundance when abundance comes and abundance always coming at you it can either go right through you and come to you or it can get stuck and and sometimes you know you notice that that um, even if people are offering you gifts or people are giving you things, you have this feeling of, no, I don't want it. Mm-hmm. And, and these, but that's so Chinese, are, right? That's so Chinese, you know, mm-hmm. like when somebody gives you, ah, oh, no, 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 no. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, bukai, 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 you know, like, no means no, bukai means no, like I can't take it. Exactly. I, I, what have I done? I don't deserve this. Like I'm, maybe there are a lot of, of, there are a lot of thoughts that come in your head. Definitely. Right. And so <laughs> these blocks, And when you look at them in detail, like these blocks oftentimes are either your blocks or they could be blocks that are planted from before, Um, either from parental views, your values and beliefs are determined by your parents, or they could be societal, or they could be something that's inherited, you know, from your grandparents and beyond. And so one of the things that I've done is that I've been removing these blocks, whatever they are, and attracting um, abundance. And so when I go in and I look at these blocks, a lot of them are related to relationships mm-hmm. or they're related to meaning beliefs that are stemmed from relationships. Right. So, so I was going to ask you, because mm-hmm. I was going to ask you about the money blocks. I mean, mm-hmm. like, why would you have money blocks at such a young age, right? Like, how do you identify? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, mm-hmm. listening to your parents, I mean, the relationship with your family. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a money issue. So how mm-hmm. did you get the money box? I mean, like, where did that come from? Yeah. I know you said yeah. mom, but mm-hmm. it's interesting. Why, why did you pick mom's up and not dad's on up? <laughs> you know? like, exactly, exactly. Good, good point. So I'm going to finish the first answer first, yeah. and then we'll go into money blocks. So, so a lot of the blocks are 
art exists because of the way that you've grown up and that you've reacted to different relationships, especially in parents. So in the work of removing those blocks, I realized that I had to mend a lot of relationships or not mend, but I had to be honest mm-hmm. and and understand what I wanted and what they wanted out of relationships to make sure that these are honest and constructive and um, nurturing relationships. And once those happen, then things flow through much easier um, because there's no blockage and there's no resistance. It's just comfortable. One of that is about understanding how your mom wants to be communicated and your way is not the only way, right? As you were saying early on. Exactly. And another way is also understanding um, understanding that you know all the things that annoy me about her is probably something that annoys me about myself Mm -hmm. Uh, for example it's just a mirror it's just a projection Mm -hmm. and it is simply a way to learn about how you can move through that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um in terms of money blocks um and anything is that so any resistance that you have is just an opportunity so it's just a block. It's an opportunity for you to go through. And it blocks happen just like arteries of a heart. If you eat too much fat, they clog up and then they block. So you need to constantly clean out the system, clean out the system so that you can have a clear flow. Mm-hmm. Um, for money blocks, um, your question was, where did my money blocks come from? I think as an Asian um, culture, we've always been very frugal in the family. Well, we, the family has been always very frugal and counting every cent and dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and money blocks are, they don't necessarily come from money and cells. Um, It comes from any emotional block because any emotional block could potentially be a block to your abundance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you were to imagine all blocks were, you know, they're just labeled block. Like if all blocks were color-coded black and they're in your body, uh, any of them could be a money block. Right, right, because right. That's blocking energy. Right, right, right. So do you think a lot of millennials have money blocks as well? Because I thought only like my generation and above have money blocks. Oh, I mean, money blocks are the most easily downloadable from parents. Um, so it really depends on how your parents are or how you how you believe, um, what you believe in opportunity. Do you believe you're worth it? Do you, do, are you able to forgive? Do you have the ability to be grat- um, to be thankful, appreciative, and grateful for what you have? Um, what's your relationship with money? Um, you know, is the relationship with money, um, a lot of it is looking at money. If you, like the, one of the coolest things um, that I love working on with clients is looking at their relationship with money and seeing money as a boyfriend or seeing money as a husband or seeing money as a loved one. Mm -hmm. Are you constantly giving money positive, nurturing, loving attention or are you treating money like, like, Oh, Oh yeah. Just, just take some, just, just, you know, um, Oh, here's like $20 um, or you crumple it up and put it in your bag. Like how do you treat it? You know, and all of that consciousness that you put into it allows for you to have a much more um, enriching experience with it. And it comes to you more because it wants to be with you. Right. Um, so right. from a spiritual sense, there's a lot that you can do around that. Of course, you know, on the other hand, there's also the practical side, um, understanding how to draw in um, abundance when, whenever you want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what is, I mean, I think it makes sense to for your work right now because you're helping people create, I mean, discover their gifts and then make money, right? So if they yes. have any blocks with money, then the system will not flow even though it's a foolproof system because a system yeah. is a system, right? Mm-hmm. It's the person that is behind the system that is most mm-hmm. important. Yes. So you've been saying a lot about like, this is just a channel, a way to get your message out there, but ultimately yes. the you. So although like your title is innovation and product and, you know, like mm. digital marketing coach, whatever it is, but ultimately there's this human side of it, which is your gifts. Like, how do you want to leave your thumbprint as I would always say in the world mm-hmm. um, and discovering you, like it's really a process um, about being you because the product to create the product is yours is uniquely yours and yeah. then it's about the money because if you don't work even the system is perfect I'm sure mm-hmm. Ying Han will give you a perfect system and if you have any blocks within yourself to 
receive money, then this system is not going to work for you. So this is so perfect. Like it's up to date. It's it's in uh it's current up to up to date marketing, and it allows you to express yourself spiritually, however the way you want it, and you know just be also developing yourself. And so it's a perfect system. So where can people find you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, they can find me on www y dash age dot net, and um and and actually I wanted to also offer um a special gift um that I may share with your audience. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, right. I was thinking like if you guys enjoyed this and if this resonates um with you and this is something that you'd love to explore, I'm I'd love to share more with five people. Um, all you have to do is just email me. Ying at y dash age dot net and say you're interested and we'll have a conversation. Sure, awesome, beautiful. So if you know that at some point in time that you do not want to serve one on one clients all the time and you need mm -hmm. some kind of systems and structures in place to replace you, uh, then connect with Ing Han. You know, um, she has given us so much. Um, I would say knowledge and also strategies and tools, if I may say so as well. Um, please connect with her if you vibe with her, her energy. So are there any last parting words for us? You know, is there like, just forget about what we just said earlier. I'm like, yeah, if I say this. People, people may go, but why did you make us sit for 25 minutes? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so if we forget what we just said earlier yeah. on, what is the one thing that you want people to remember the most from this? I want them to know that you can dream big. And if there's a vision and if there's a dream that keeps coming to you and you keep pushing it back, it's not a dream. It's a calling. Mm. And you're not going to be happy unless you give that some attention. So give that attention, you know, call a lease and like talk to people and spiritual entrepreneurs, share that thoughts that you have and get support so that you can get you this off and going because there's so many people just like you who feel this way. Um, and then if you're dreaming too small and if your dream doesn't excite you anymore, it means that it's not big enough. Mm. and it's usually a nagging sound right like it, it just doesn't yes. go it's like this it's not fun <laughs> it's like the ego but it's like i think more irritating than the ego because it just doesn't let you off like the ego if you just talk to it and like you know what pacify and it just goes away for like five minutes but definitely this, but this passion this dream and this purpose i mean it maybe don't know what you want to do but there is this sense of Something out there is waiting for you. Something bigger is happening. You may not know what is it right now. And yeah. so if you want to know what it is, I mean, Ying Han is somebody that you can talk to to help you discover what exactly you need to do. But right now, if you have this nagging feeling of there's something bigger out there, I need to do something bigger out there. I need to quit my job. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do, but you know there's something bigger. That's the key. That's the key that whatever that you're doing right now is it has served its purpose and something bigger is waiting for you. Of course, you'll be scared. But if you're in the right community, like, like in Han, you know, she's there to support you, then there's absolutely no reason why it cannot become a reality for you. So once again, where can we find you again? You can find me, you can email me, find me at ying at y-age.net. Um, so you can email me on y ying at y-age.net or you can just go to y-age.net to so find out more. Sure, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Ying Han, for joining mm -hmm. us today. I know it's like, what, 6.30 dinner time for you in San Francisco. <laughs> so thank you so much for mm -hmm. your presence. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful member in the spiritual community as well. So if you are interested, because this thing that I decided to do the spiritual show, I mean, the startup show is, um, it's only available to the members. So if you mm -hmm. want to find out more about uh, what I do and what in Han do and the rest of the people do, go ahead and get your bum bums over there. Go to Facebook and search for the spiritual entrepreneurs. Uh, you see my face there and request to join. 
All right. So thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Elise. Um, this has been such an amazing experience. And just watching you and seeing what you've done for the community is inspiring. And I really appreciate your leadership and, and your presence. Thank you so much for those lovely words. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's amazing. How many people are there? 15,000, 17,000? 17,000 now. It's just amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So um, this is like a testimonial of like women can support other women. We don't have to be bitching and like backstabbing people all the time. And I think as, and I truly strongly believe when women collaborate and connect, you know, drop the money because seriously, you know, I think the number one reason why your business exists is to make money. So if you're thinking about money all the time, then of course you're not going to be happy even when you get it. But doing this, hosting these shows really completely lights me up. I mean, it's free, but I want to give back. And, you know, if I didn't do these shows, you would not know these little gems that are hidden in the community and they wouldn't be coming one step forward as well. So it's truly amazing. It's double blessing for all of us. So stay tuned for another episode. I'm sure... Uh, you would uh, enjoy that as well and so in the meantime you take care and I'll talk to you soon alright alright thank you see you guys bye